without any man's involvement and phenomena means the effects of nature that is known as natural phenomena now let us see some natural phenomena that are this that are winds storms and cyclones i hope you have seen in news channels right there regarding the cyclones earthquakes like uh, natural disasters they are called as natural disasters because they are providing or resulting in a great damage to the human life and also for the properties right and then we will be saying that these natural circumstances which are unpredictable which are caused suddenly it result in the disasters and those are known as natural phenomena and some examples wind storms and cyclones and now in this class we will be studying detail about two destructive natural phenomena those are lightning and earthquakes these two natural phenomena will cause a major damage to life and to resources that is if you observe any earthquakes which happened previously in Japan and China, you will be observing that whole land, the area which is covered under these vibrations will be collapsed totally. The life and the properties and resources, whatever in that particular area will be collapsed permanently. And it takes a, a lot of years to accomplish those things. Let us see the two important destructive natural phenomena that is lightning and earthquakes. Now while coming to this lightning, you will be observing them during the rainfalls, right? And previously during our ancestors used to believe that the lightning is a symbol for the God's visit. That means they used to operate and, 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 and they have the superstitious beliefs such as that God spear, God's anger came upon them But now, according to scientists, they have given the reason for the cause of lightning and thundering. In predices that you will be mostly observing these lightning and thunderings, thundering is the sound generated that will be you will hearing very slowly by compared to the lightning, right? That is because light travels faster than the sound. So that is the reason we will be seeing first light, then we will be hearing the thunders. Now, by coming to the cause of this lightning, the major cause of this lightning is accumulation of charges in clouds and this is known as, for example let us take a picture such as these are the clouds. Now in this the charges that is plus minus, all these charges are accumulated with a heavy intensity. Therefore the collapsing or bombardment of these atoms will result in the formation of light and thunders. That is the reason behind this lightning and thundering. And now let us see, we have now we will be learning regarding how to protect ourselves from these lightnings, these deadly sparks, which will be affecting us. And most lightning doesn't cause any damage to our bodies, but we have to cover ourselves from the exposure to the light. Now let us see the preventions and the precautions what we have to take from these natural disasters. Now let us see how the lightning occurs that is. What type of charges are they? Previously I have said lightning occurs because of the accumulation of charges in the clouds, right? Now what are the charges and how they are accumulated in clouds we have to see. Now let us discuss the types of charges. That is, previously during our Greek's time, the sparks that occurred, that means during the Greek's time, the lightning or the sparks, whatever occurred, they thought as such. That is, they resulted as follows. That is, as shown. Ancient Greeks, what is actually first experiment done by regarding the charges was done by the ancient Greeks. Okay, the very close to them. They have done a small experiment, that is, they have taken one amber, that is some simple like one glass rod and it is that. And what they have done is, they have rubbed it with 
a silk cloth. They have taken a silk cloth and they have wrapped this glass from. That means the wrapping or this wrapping will result in the formation of charges on the surface of the glass straw and simultaneously on the silk cloth. That is, whenever this wrapped glass straw is brought near to a light particle such as paper or hair, then it used to attract them towards it. That means some charge or some force is acting because of the rubbing of these particles. Now, we will be seeing other activity that is charging by rubbing. This is the statement goes. That is, by rubbing any particle with other particles, then we will be generating the charges on the surface. Let us see some different types of charges which are generated because of the rubbing thing. That is, I have taken one plastic rifle and I have rubbed it with quality cover. Now, when I rub this quality, when I rub this rifle with this quality cover, it has been charged up. And at the same time, I have taken one balloon and I have rubbed it with a silk cloth, silk fur. And it is also getting charged. That means, by rubbing, because of the sake of rubbing, they are getting charged. Now, what I did is, I have brought this balloon near to the rifle. Then, what happened is, they are attracted. That means, there is an attractive force between this balloon and rifle. When I have brought this rifle near to the polythene cover, it has rippled. That means, some repulsive forces are attracted, are there between them. Now, let us see one more thing. That is, glass straw. When I rub the glass straw with silk fur, it is attracted when it is brought near to the plastic straw. Okay, I have rubbed the plastic straw simultaneously with the quality. I have brought this plastic straw and this glass straw near to them, near to each other. Then there is an attractive force between them. Now, from the second glass feather, some two major forces, what are acting here are two forces. That is, the attractive force and the repulsive force. The first attractive force which is acting is known as the force. That is because of the opposite charges developed on plastic rifle and glass straw. Now, the repulsive force which is generated is because of the same charges generated on the surfaces of both glass straw and plastic straw. So, we can say that the repulsive forces are mainly due to light charges. That is, same charges that is either positive or negative charge. But these are same. Positive, positive will ripple and negative, negative will ripple. This repulsive force acting between them. And when coming to attractive forces, the positive is attracted towards the negative and negative is attracted towards the positive. These two forces are said to be attractive forces and these are said to be repulsive forces. That means I can divide here simply the light charges will ripple and the unlike charges will attract. This is just a statement we have drawn from the rubbing. Now let us see how the charges are transferred from one object to the other. That is, let us do some small activity in order to understand how these charges are transferred. Let us take one jar or a jar bottle. Let it be one bottle. It is a glass jar bottle as you suggest. Now, I will be taking one cardboard paper which is uh, having more size or more length than this uh, inlet of the bottle. Okay, I will be placing this cardboard paper on the inlet of the glass jar. Now, I will be pinning a hole on the cardboard paper and I will be dropping one thread inside. Okay, now I will be tying the aluminium strips, that is two aluminium strips for the thread. Now, you, I hope you can see this. Now, what I will do is, I will be rubbing this glass jar or this glass bottle and it attains the charge. Okay. Now, when this is attaining a charge, let it be either positive or negative charge. Now, these charge are transferred through the bottle to the aluminium strips which are present inside. That means here we can say that the charges are transferable. That means they have the capability to transfer from one place to the other. Now these foil strips 
are charged simultaneously and you can observe that these uh, coil strips charged are of like charges that means these two will be repelled because they are charged with same charge okay now when you catch this cardboard paper with your hand these aluminum strips will become normal strips that means they will lose their charge that is known as aluminum strips that have been dischargeable that means the charge has been lost by the aluminum strips that is because why the charges are in turn <coughs> transferred to your hand and from your hand it is transferred towards the earth so this has lost their capacity of charging and they are said to be as dischargeable <coughs> now we will be seeing the term that is devices used to test whether an object is charged or not is known as electroscope electroscope is the device used whether this particular substance or object is charged that means it has either negative or positively charged particles now let us see this charge can be transformed from one object to the other that is only with the help of a medium that is known as the metal conductor with the help of the metal conductor the charges are transformed so we will be, if you observe you will be seeing <coughs> frequently that electrons are transformed through the conductors that is copper conductors right so you will be observing that is to pass the electricity that is because they are the major carriers of charges now the process of transferring of charge from a charged particle to the other particle which is not in a charged state is said to be as earthy that means if at all you you pass the charged particle the charged particles from a charged object to the earth then it is said to be as earthy that is earth comes into the consideration so we will call it as earthy and that is nothing but simply i have said previously that from my hand the charges has been transferred to the earth that means earth has absorbed all the charges from this aluminum strip through my hand so this is known as earthing now we will be using this earthing process mainly in household because uh, every electricity device that is given the earthing you will be frequently hearing the word earthing because the major carriers or whenever there is a person or a a large amount of carriers are present it will be directly transferred to the earth in order to prevent the shocks or damage for the electrical wires and household equipments now we have seen this experiment how the charges are transferred now let us see the story that is behind the lighting process 